Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? This was always going to happen because the popularity of Ozempic has taken off. We know that. Um, I mean, when 60 Minutes are doing stories on it, I think Channel 7 even did a whole special on it as well. Mm. Um, and Hollywood stars are coming out endorsing Ozempic. It takes off. Not not cheap. Um, a lot of people using it. Now, this is what happens when something is popular like that. But people come become addicted to it, and then you have problems. So they're talking at the moment, Scott Disick, who, which Kardashian was he married to? Courtney. Courtney. Oh, no, Courtney. not Courtney. Um, um, yeah, Chloe. Courtney. 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 So he has finally <laughs> and they decided... Have children. He's handed himself in. He is seeking help for his ozempic use after he has left his friends and family shocked by his appearance. He looks gaunt. He has large black bags under his eyes. He doesn't look healthy. God, that sun- sunken eye look, doesn't he? Because his face what? is a bit I skull-like. I think that photo we're looking at is a bit doctored. I would assume it was is the perfect photo for the story. Yeah. Mm. Thirteen twenty four ten. Do you know something? Do you know someone that this is happening to? Claire Claudia has given us a call. Um, tell us about your experience with it, Claudia. Um, I think it's a bit of both, positive and negative. I can see why people get addicted to it, because when you do go on it, you can lose weight so quickly. But also, I've seen the scary side, the side effects as well, because I go on it and I get off it, um, because I do faint from it, and I, I do feel quite sick being so on it. So, you've been on it, you had rapid weight loss. How many kilos did you lose? I'm 25 kilos. Wow. Over what what time period? N- nearly a year, a bit less than a year. Okay. Did, and did and you, you went off for a while, did you? Yep. And now I went back on it again. So you fainted a couple of times, Claire. You, you, are you worried? Do you feel healthy? Or are there moments where you, the nausea is just too much for you? It sometimes it does get scary because you do get quite nauseous and quite you feel quite ill. And then you go, why are you doing this to yourself? And then you think, oh, because there is somewhat health benefits. You are losing weight. You can get... I've lowered my blood pressure medication because of it. And you yep. think of the positive and then you go, but is it really worth the long term? What, okay. is, what does your day on a plate look like? Are you eating much at all? No, I'll have a morning, like a meal replacement shake for breakfast, some grapes at lunch and then a bit of steak at dinner. That's about all, really. Okay, good effort. Not much. I'm hungry. Denise, you had some drastic side effects with the Zempic. Is that getting on it or getting off it, Denise? It was actually while I was on it. I ended up losing about eight kilos, which was great. Yeah. But I ended up going to the doctor and having a blood test, and it actually affected my liver. Yeah. In what um, way? So, well, I end up having like, from the function and function. Yeah. So, I, my doctor recommended go off it, and as soon as I went off it, I actually ballooned. Right. Wow. Far the far weight, beyond the weight where... came back. And the, more? The weight came back with a vengeance, yeah. Right. Back. Over so, what period of time did you stack it rapidly? Probably for about six months. Okay. Afterwards. And it was, yeah, and then I've been on another diet, which has worked amazingly. And is that, is that a healthy people, diet or is that a drug, Denise? Oh, no, healthy. Very healthy great, diet. Great. Like eating yeah. six times a day, small meals, but it's... It, yeah, basically, it just speeds your metabolism up, which is amazing. Well, I mean, if you had to go through that to find something that works, that's awesome. Well done. Sue's actually, well, she uh, she recommends it. So what are your experiences with a Zempic, Sue? I had really high blood pressure. It was passing out at work all the time. And so my doctor said to me, and I was a bit overweight, not massively, but he said, I'm going to try you on a Zempic and see if we can get some weight off and lower your blood pressure. My blood pressure's gone down. I'm not having any more giddy attacks. I was on the full dose of Azampic, which I lost 19 kilos since January, and now I'm back to having just half a dose, and I feel fantastic. My appetite is a bit suppressed, but I only eat what I feel like eating. I don't yep. push myself to eat, but I still eat healthy, and I feel great. If there's education around it, I think it can work, can't it? Because if you need weight loss to, to, to lower other levels within your body, yeah. but you know it's a temporary fix, which is going to be part of an educational program. Yeah, but look, I think... Like like with most drugs, there are parts of the community that are going to misuse it, and I think that's, oh, yeah. that's where the I just, issues are. I'm a little bit worried about doctors prescribing it. I, look, for diabetics and for people that need it in their life, obviously that's what it was prescribed for. But if you like, if you were prescribed it, whip, I just don't. I, no, not me. I don't understand that. That no. that just. 
I don't know. It gets me down. I feel like it's a quick fix yeah. for a doctor, but you trust that profession. That's uh, that's something that I don't think that needs well, to be prescribed. You just need to think it is something foreign, and if there's other ways of doing it as a healthy option, then maybe so, depending on your size. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I want to talk about nicknames. Because I even just reading the article, oh, I lolled in the. Oh, you lolled in, a bit, did you? I lolled yeah. in the home office, because I think the most okay. I don't like nicknames when people have given themselves nicknames. Yeah. But I love a nickname, and it's a bit mean. But that the person who you've nicknamed doesn't know it's their nickname. And it's just a little joke between friends like, oh, we call such and such up the corridor. Uh, I'll give you an example because I'm not doing it very well, am I? So give us a call if you've got a a funny name for someone at work and then we can reveal what we call um, Whipper behind his back. It's hilarious. That's what I was sort of waiting for because I noted that on the ideas list. And then we can reveal to Whipper what we call him... So we'll wait. Well, we'll I get don't a drum speak like roll. that. You're repeating the joke. We'll get yeah. a drum roll for that, Jess, for when that... Not yet, Jess. No, not so yet. we'll do that at the end Hang to really... Hang on for that. That's hilarious. I've got a few here just to get the ball rolling. If you've got one, give us a call. Um, there's a, they've surveyed all these people. So there's one guy, and I don't know, he's got a busy street, a very busy street, but doesn't know the name of the neighbours except for the nickname. So they, they call one guy The Torch up the road. Um, he's he's now moved on, which is probably for the best, because there was no do-it-yourself job around the house or around the yard that he wasn't prepared to set himself on fire for. Awesome. <laughs> so they called him right. They called him the torch. I love this one. We had a dead Dave down the street because this because no one had seen Dave for a while, so everyone thought he died. Dead oh, Dave. did you know Dave died? No, he didn't oh. die. Oh, but now they just call him dead Dave. Awesome. Yes. They, call, they call another guy Thong Man, and that <laughs> is because apparently the wife, yeah. um, he, this guy's wife, who's telling us the nicknames, a parcel <laughs> arrived on their doorstep that wasn't from them, and they opened it up, and it was a pleather thong. And then they've obviously had to go up the road and give the box back and say, thong I man. think you're missing this. So now <laughs> Thong Man lives at number 69, oh, I'm guessing. What? A pleather oh. thong, which is what I wore to Australian Fashion Week oh yesterday. My God. Yes. What's the nickname for the neighbour? Oh, hi. We've got a um, person who likes to break into our home and what? raid our pantry. So we we call him Goldilocks. Or, 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 or the thief. Are you serious? You could use the That's... word criminal if you want to. Are, are you mates with well, him, though, Cass? Uh, no, no. And the um, police say he's harmless. Well, he's, he's a criminal, though. He's breaking, this is exactly what He's we say. Thief. So, when it actually happened about five years ago, I was sitting on the front veranda checking mm-hmm. my emails, having my cup of tea one morning, and when I went to go back inside, I noticed that there was curried rice down the hallway, and thought, "Oh, damn kids! They've fed the dogs curry," and I was yeah. cursing. And it wasn't until seven o'clock that night when my daughter came home and went to her room and started screaming. He'd eaten the curried rice in her bed, climbed through her window while I was on the front veranda. That sounds harmless to me. And he locked me out. Cass, you Pardon? need to do something about this. Immediately. I, uh, we have called the police because he'll come and eat from our bins. My neighbour will send a message, Goldilocks is on the loose, close your gate. We call the police all the time. And they're like, oh, it's Joel. They call him Joel, but we call him Goldilocks. And he's harmless. But, you know, I mean, he's not harmless if I meet him in the hallway. Yeah, no, in that my freaks home. you out. No, he's not. No, a, your kids are Or when he's there. lying no. in, in your daughter's bed eating curry. Yeah, I could not get her back in that bedroom for a week. Funny, that. Oh, gosh. No. All right. Yeah. Okay, guys, this is a really big moment for the show because last night I on the don't... email, I went back, wait till we tell Whipper what his nickname is behind his back. So let's get a drum roll for Kate's. Have a beat, Brady. Just... Here we go. What bullying have you got for this morning? I've got to find the message. Sorry, guys. These are great because these are the things we would say to you. Like the big rig, that's a good one. Hmm. Mm, that's not it. The beast from the east. That's not it. Whipper the double dipper. What does that mean? Well, you Can't work Michael it out, Hunt. mate. You know. It. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No, and my favourite is Whopper. I mean, yeah, but you know that one, so it's not really fair. Thank you, Kate Ritchie, and thank you, Ryan James Fitzgerald. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast.
Do you remember the old cigarette lighters in cars? Yes. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. With the rings inside it. You'd press it we, in, wouldn't you? Yeah, and then yes. it'd pop out. Remember that, Kate, just to light up your dart back in the day. But oh, the thing yeah. is very dangerous because as a kid, when mum or dad popped out of the car and you had a couple of friends in there, nothing better than burning stuff with a bit of the cigarette lighter. <laughs> you, you can't have... They're not in there anymore no. I, for obvious reasons. Okay, I'm going to show... Right, so I got in the car the other day and I thought there was a cigarette lighter because Lenny had a mate in the car, right? Fred was in there with him and I thought the boys had burnt my car. And then I realised, I'm going to show you a photo here. I had a two-litre water bottle in the middle of the car. I got out of the car for a couple of hours. Now, Kate, what's happened, yeah, right? I can see that. So, what's happened? On the happened? centre, this is the centre console. I can the, see some mm-hmm. damage. Yeah, the centre co- console, and there's leather on the top of the armrest in the middle there, right? Yeah. The sun had come up through the front of the, front of the car. It has gone through the water bottle. It hasn't burnt the water bottle because it was full of water, but it's magnified through the water and the water bottle. And I could smell it as soon as I got in the car. It's burnt my car. <gasps> the magnification has burnt my car. Is that... That is a... It uh, started a fire. Yeah. Does this happen? Well, this... Do you know what? It happens more often than you think. And 13, 24, 10, when is the magnification? I've been watching videos the last couple of days. Do you know what's another big one at home? Fish bowls. Fish bowls at home, and really? if the sun hits it in the right spot, it's burnt houses down. Oh my god! When, when has the magnification burnt something? Thirteen, twenty, fourteen. Jeez. I need backup. 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 Katie's given us call. What randomly combusted in the in your front yard, Katie? Uh, we were having our council clean up, yeah. and a neighbour came and knocked on our on the front door. I opened it up and she was screaming fire. Um, we looked out the front and everything we'd put out for council cleanup was on fire. Oh my God. Everything was set ablaze. Now, do you know <laughs> what started it? We assume it was the mirror, that the reflection from the sunlight Ooh. on the mirror had set everything else on fire. And we had some cardboard, but we also had some like uh, cabinetry and timber. There was some some metal as well, which had been like moulded on, heated so much that it melted. Oh, oh my God. goodness. You don't so think about it, it do you? No. Insurance companies would be able to know the answer to this, wouldn't they? Because if, if houses are burnt down, you know where a fire has started, don't you? I think so. Yeah, I think they, they can, can work that. it out. Katie, right, that's Kate, an unbelievable story. Let's go to Kate now. And what was set alight at your place, Kate? Yeah, hi, guys. Um, so I had a little, like face mirror on a table on my balcony Mm, Um, and it had been sitting there for, I don't know, about six hours and I was about to go out for a walk and a friend rang and I just happened to go and sit on a chair out on the balcony and as I was sitting there, the reflection from the mirror um, set fire to one of my outdoor chairs on the balcony. Oh, that is so scary. Yeah. That is so scary. Thank God you took that phone call. I know, and the person who rang me, I hadn't. They never ring, and I was like, "Oh my god!" It's like I can't believe we were just about to leave the house. As long as your eyebrows looked good, though. (laughs) Well, that's right. That's why I had it out there. (laughs) Oh, that's well. I. I'm putting uh, well. Jeez. I'm putting all the because mi- I've got a mirror in every room in this house. That one on <laughs> the one on the ceiling you've got. <laughs> oh, I have to get that down. <laughs> Warney, Warney came home and, uh, and burned a few rooms as well. Unfortunately, Ali, what happened to when you were, when you were driving, Ali? So I had a deodorant can in my car. I was driving an old school Beetle at the time, and then all of a sudden, it's like I heard a bang, and I just assumed, you know, it's an old car. But my deodorant can had exploded in the back seat, so luckily I didn't have it in the front, and it cracked the whole can, split in half, deodorant everywhere. Was it from the heat, Ali, or you don't know? Yeah, from the heat, because I had been working all day, had it in the car, didn't even realise, jumped in, and it's not obviously an old school car, not not the fastest thing to cool down, and then, yeah, it just exploded everywhere. The only positive, the silver lining out of that, that the car would have smelled magnificent, wouldn't it? Yeah, you did, you didn't need spray. (laughs) 
<laughs> the Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Had a beautiful weekend, guys. Share, share. Got out of town. Share, share. Uh, went down to uh, down to Victoria, um, and I've realised I don't really know. And this is so sad. I don't really know Victoria very well. I've travelled to Melbourne so many times mm. over the years, and I. Uh, it's embarrassing when I start speaking to people from Melbourne where um, my knowledge of Melbourne is really just the Logies and staying at South Bank. Just fly down for awards, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Melbourne's so grab great. The, you grab the gold and come home, mate. G- great food and, and coffee and, and you get your makeup done and well, go to did. the Logies. And I know there's much more to Victoria than that. You message saying I had the best coffee of my entire life. I did at a place called The Store mm-hmm. um, on Phillip Island. Yeah, right. Um, uh, Oh, so Philip, we, yes, Philip Island. So that's a couple of hours out of Melbourne, is that correct? It did. It took a couple of hours to drive there um, uh, from the airport. And we, I wanted to go down and see the little penguins. Oh, the fairy penguins. Oh, yeah. oh so the penguins come out of the oh. ocean just on dark and they kind of waddle up and it's all very cute. Cutie. And, and we, we partly we did that because my daughter has Pengi, hmm? who is this incredible soft toy. And, oh, I mean, gotcha. I, could, I could fill you in on the... the that's journey okay. of Pengi. This is Pengi number two because the first Pengi yeah. was left at the mother-in-law's house oh. and then apparently put in the mail and then yeah. never arrived. Lenny's, um, Lenny's, Lenny's still got Porcupine and Foxy. Really? Yeah. Good team. So we took Pengi to meet and, the Penguins. And Lenny's uh, he's 19 now, mm-hmm. which is a bit weird. <laughs> oh, we've all got a soft <laughs> toy we fancy, don't we? A bit weird with we? his first girlfriend. Uh, um, but it was, it, it was actually, it was, it was really amazing. Stayed at some um, uh, beautiful accommodation, which was kind of, it felt like you were... A million miles from anywhere. Oh, that's beautiful. Bought some tea towels. Good news. Oh, but oh, wow, big, huge oh, weekend you, for Kate. Two, I got, your head in. I got two Philip, and the thing is, now you've even ruined my tea towel buying experience because I bought two tea towels, and all I could think of is you guys thinking, "Oh, how sad. She's so sad." <laughs> um, but I've got two Philip Island tea towels, wow. and then I got, um, I got a Melbourne tea towel with a tram on it. Oh, you got, um, oh you so got, beautiful. You got two from Switzerland from. Me last week. Oh, I did. I didn't mention those because they'll have there. You said I have to put them on the story, so I haven't had time to do that. Did you get um, us anything? Did we get you? this story? And I haven't even started it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, you know how you hear all these horror stories about people risking their lives mm. to get the perfect photograph? Yeah. Well, that's I'm I'm lucky to be here today. What did you do? Oh, I no. nearly died on Phillip Island at Five Acres. I, I, I and imagine if it had ended like that. In some ways, it would have been perfect. I would have been on an on acreage in the middle of nowhere where no one was bothering me with my yeah. daughter. I mean, it's practically Kate Ritchie heaven. And um, so I'm uh, checking out the farm mm-hmm. that we're staying on, and the family that live there just so lovely. And little Oscar's showing us around, and they. They had that um, those amazing um, Highland cattle, right? Oh yeah, with the and fringe. With the fringe, so cute. Fringe and horns. Yeah. I'm leaning in, like it's all you know about the gram. I haven't even put this photo up, but I will show it to you in a second because it's not even a great photo. It's not a great photo, but I could be dead. Um, I was leaning so far into the fence because you couldn't go into the actual paddock because there was one female, one male, and I think he gets a bit cranky. Leaning so far into the fence that all of a sudden, as I'm leaning to try and get the perfect shot, I don't know what happened, but... I was electrocuted <laughs> because oh, it was a, it was an electric awesome. fence. Have a look at the photo that I got. Yeah, yeah, this is, got, yeah it's this amazing. Is, yeah. Oh, it's a great yeah. photo. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's perfect. It Would looks, you put that on the ground? Yeah, it looks shaky, oh, shaky because you've been zapped boring. on the back of the neck. Where did the where did the um, fence line get you? Well, in my hand because I'm doing your hand. This. Yeah, right. I, mean, I know well, people just, listening, but I'm leaning in. You're leaning like, over a little bit. No, it's not. It's pulsating. No, it's not. Yeah. But you know what the scary thing is mm-hmm. that I re- that I realised yep. that I must have so much pain in my life. For probably three seconds. What happened? I didn't even notice I was being electrocuted. <laughs> oh. And I thought, oh, oh, 
oh, what's I'm this be- weird feeling? I think, and then yeah. the woman, Katie, she said, oh, you've been... Like, you've been your eyes are hanging out of your head. Electrocuted. Yeah. I said, you better be careful. I'll be out here in the middle of the night jumping oh. off. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Won't be the last time. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. So how to get out of a conversation. Everybody's been in that moment. And normally yes. if you're... Great. As- Can I write this to you? <laughs> <laughs> Normally, How do you get out of a break? You're paid to be part of this conversation, Ryan. And Kate, I need three minutes of your time. I oh, don't do ask I? a lot. Oh, yeah. but I'm just the sugar well, on Oh, the how good's the sugar? You wouldn't have it without it, would you? Anyway, so when you're in a conversation, and normally if it's a social situation, let's say you're at a party, let's say you're at the pub, whatever it might be, and you've kind of had enough of that chat. Now, normally your go-tos are, oh, that's a great story. I'm just going to get a drink. Do you want one? So you kind of do that one and hopefully they don't say, no, I'm all right because you don't want to bring one back for them. Or the other one is, oh, that's amazing. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I am busting for a wee. Anyway, great to chat. That's amazing. Good to see you. What if they're telling you about their unwell mother? Well, then you give them a little bit more. Like don't what? you? Or you drag or swap f- the word "amazing" out for? Mm, oh, that's just, that's tough. That's really tough. I'm so sorry. Hold that thought. I'm going yeah, off to the. Yeah, I've got a t- got a terrible stomach. I'm sorry. I've got leaky bum at the moment. I better go. So here's that's not the example oh, of how you get out of it. Okay, okay good. So yeah. they're the bad examples. Scribble that's what that, everyone scribble does. Scribble that out. Scribble that yes. out, Ryan. Go from the top. Yeah, New leaky page. Bum. No. <laughs> okay. Delete leaky bum. Uh, <laughs> so what their advice is that whatever you start the conversation with. So for an example, Kate, if I walk up to you and I say, Hey, how you been? And you go, Good, good, good. What's been happening? And then you say, Oh, I was just around at Mum's place this afternoon. We were looking through some old photos. Let's that's let's say that's the conversation conversation and then it comes cool. it might go back to something else it might t- go elsewhere like a holiday you could chat about oh. it might be something to do with work conversation but the conversation I- breakdown <laughs> But the, then how I wrap it up to get out of it yeah. is I go back to the first topic that we spoke about. Which is my mum. Your mum and the photo album. But this is, that's, that you're just saying that as an example. If if okay. we had to circle back yeah, give me to what one. we first would talk about normally when you approach me is yeah. something about is you food. giving me a massage. Okay, yeah. so. Yeah, or <laughs> something inappropriate. So, so you've wor- hey, Kate, you've worked your buzzies off today. <laughs> Mate, I would that's never. that's a classic one that well, he says. That's what John Whipley you. says. And then to you circle back to mm. what was your cup size again? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, oh, oh, your mum's got cancer. Oh, oh no worries. Hey, you, uh, you've been hey, working your buzzies off today. <laughs> and the next thing you know, she's left you. Conversation over. Yes. Oh, well, that's it for us today, guys. Yeah. Um, oh, I, there is a brand new Educate podcast. I love Educate. We spoke with Fletcher. I'm not sure if you know her, but she's an, an incredible... singer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see it on the sheet? She's an incredible no. artist. She's heading here uh, in July, brand new album, In Search of the Antidote. But, like, really fun chat. Yeah. And has hung out with the likes of Charlie XCX and Taylor Swift. Awesome. And has just... Fantastic, great stories um, and is on the up and up. So make sure you check it out. Brand new Educate podcast now. Yes. Well, normally, I do, normally I lie in the bath and listen to the Educate podcast. Do you? That's a great it's idea. It's relaxing <laughs> and entertaining. Please keep your togs on. We're out of here. <laughs> Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.